Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard. I want to talk to you today about a recent article in the New York Times called The Myth of the Big Bad Gluten. And a rebuttal article written by the author of the best-selling book, Wheat Belly, Dr. Davis, who wrote a rebuttal suggesting that all the science in the New York Times article was flawed or incomplete. Dr. Davis also invited a intelligent evidence-based debate on the subject of gluten, whether it's a poison or just a hard to digest protein. I really did do and offer evidence-based science with over 600 scientific references in my new book called Eat Wheat, suggesting that wheat is actually, and gluten is actually just a protein and not the poison that we've made it out to be. In the article I showed you with this video, I talk step by step and I kind of go, go and give you the other side of the science suggesting that we may not be such a poison after all. One, do we have the genetics to digest wheat? Well, in Dr. Davis's article, he said we've only been eating wheat for 10,000 years. The reality is this good, well-documented science suggesting that we found gluten from wheat and barley in the teeth of ancient humans some 3.4 to 4 million years ago, suggesting that we have millions of years of genetics to digest wheat. In fact, we've only been eating meat for 500,000 years, suggesting that we actually have over 2 million years more genetics to digest wheat than we do meat. When you look closely at how we digest wheat, it's really clear that we have enzymes from microbes in our mouth, esophagus, small intestine, and large intestine that are specifically designed to break down wheat, gluten, and the hard to digest alpha gelatins in wheat. So to say that we don't have the genetics to do it is sort of hard to believe and not really the facts or not really the truth. They say in his article that there are really severe, uh, hard to digest components of wheat called phytic acids, which block iron and create all kinds of problems with, uh, they block calcium causing osteoporosis and iron deficiency disorders. Well, studies show, and they don't tell you about this, studies show that people who had a high phytic acid diet, a high grain diet, actually had 41% more iron in their blood than people ate a low phytic acid, no grain diet. People say, experts say, that, that phytic acids block calcium absorption or linked to bone density and osteoporosis. And studies show that people on a high phytic acid, high grain diet actually have greater bone density than people on a, a low phytic acid diet. And more importantly, is the phytic acid that's not digested in the upper part of the digestion goes into the large intestine and, and supports a, a massive production of, of short chain fatty acids like butyric acids that drive the immunity, the immunity and the immune system that it, where 80% of the body's immune system is found. Studies show that, that these phytic acids in the large intestine lower cholesterol, lower blood sugar, and even prevent colon cancer. And the lectins that they talk about that are so hard to digest in as well, also been shown to actually prevent and protect against colon cancer. So again, when we look at just one part of a grain or a food of any kind, we take out one chemical, it's not representative of the whole. Potatoes have solanine and tomatoes have tomatine, lethal uh, poisons that in the 1800s, when those chemicals weren't hybridized out of tomatoes and potatoes, were literally lethal and were killing people. But now they've been hybridized, so these are in minute amounts. Every food on the planet Many of the foods on the planet have some type of chemical constituent which are hard to digest. And new science is suggesting that when we take away all the hard to digest foods, that we may be in fact compromising our own immune system. In fact, that, that our digestive system is required to be stimulated by some of these hard to digest foods to boost our immunity. And as we go down a diet that is full of processed foods and now more sterile, taking harder and harder to digest foods out of our diet, number one, because we can't digest them because we've ate these processed foods for as long, it's literally broken down our digestive system in a significant manner and it's rendered us unable to digest. So we keep taking the foods and the harder to digest, rough, challenging foods to digest out of our diet. 
One study compared three groups of people, a non-celiac group, a group that were recently diagnosed with celiac but not yet on a gluten-free diet, and a group of celiac people who were on a gluten-free diet for a while. The group that was on the, the gluten-free diet that were celiac had four times the level of mercury in their blood compared to the non-gluten folks and the people who were celiac but not yet on a gluten-free diet, suggesting that somehow the gluten-free diet has compromised our immunity in, 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 to be able to actually process some of these environmental toxins which are simply everywhere. Another study, they took the Amish people, Amish kids who, who have cows as pets and run around barefoot in the barns, old-fashioned, fa old living in very dusty environments, have been found to have the lowest asthma rates on the planet. And the study suggests that the dust that they breathe compared to industrial farmers were, were the, 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 the immune-stimulating irritants that activated their immune system and gave them the lowest asthma rates on the planet. The science is beginning to suggest that this hygiene hypothesis that we can't continue to take away everything that's challenging out of our digestion. We're going to be left without an immune system capable of managing this very toxic world we live in. This is really, really important. And the, the real reason for all these problems is a breakdown of our digestive system because of 60 years of processed foods and, 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 and refined oils and vegetable oils that have been purified, bleached, deodorized, that have, that have congested our livers and our bile flow and our gallbladders and broken down our digestive system in such a way that we can't digest much of anything anymore. In one study, it was shown that processed food, a diet of processed food increased the rate of what's called metabolic syndrome, which is abdominal obesity, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, and low good cholesterol by a whopping 141%. In the same study, people who ate a whole food diet, including whole grains and whole wheat, reduced their metabolic syndrome by a whopping 38%. So these are powerful, powerful studies. In Dr. Davis's article, he says that, that wheat is linked to Alzheimer's and depression and anxiety and autism. And in my book, Eat Wheat, not to bore you with all the details, but there's science on the other side of the aisle that suggests that wheat does exactly the opposite. Whole grains will lower the risk of Alzheimer's, lower the risk of autism and schizophrenia, reduce anxiety and depression, lower and decrease obesity levels, decrease blood sugar levels. Yes, whole wheat reduces blood sugar, not raises it as these so-called gluten-free experts will like to tell you. In fact, whole wheat diets have been shown to extend life, reduce cause of death significantly, 18 to 20%, reduce cancers and heart disease, 15 to 20%. So there's a lot of science that the $16 billion a year industry, gluten-free industry, doesn't want you to hear. And that's why I felt compelled to write the book because maybe these hard to digest foods, because the grain brain books, book, they're not after just wheat. We're talking all grains, all nuts, all seeds that we've been eating for millions of years. We take those out of the diet. Maybe, you know, I don't mind not eating wheat. That's just one grain. But do we take all of them out? Are we going down the same dangerous road we did when we took cholesterol, saturated fats out of our diet that we were eating also for millions of years? So this is a dangerous road that we're hoeing. And, we're, and we, now we have a $16 billion a year industry. That is a powerful monetary force that may not look back and try to correct its mistakes. This is a money-driven industry now, and that scares me. We know that the sugar industry in the 1960s paid off Harvard researchers to redirect the, the, the blame on the growing number of heart disease on cholesterol and fats away from sugar. And now we know 60 years later it was sugar all along and cholesterol had nothing to do with heart disease. Are we doing the exact same thing? One of Dr. Davis's, a couple of more of Dr. Davis's points, and I know this is a long video, he suggests that wheat has opiates in it, and therefore it's addictive. And we're all addicted to wheat. Once we start eating it, we can't stop. And they gave people opioid blocking drugs and they stopped eating wheat significantly. Mother's milk has opioids in it. Coffee, chocolate has opioids. Soy, spinach has opioids in it. Meat has opioids in it. They gave people op the same opioid blocking drugs and they reduced their consumption of meat by 50%. 
they reduced their consumption of all their food by 28%. So to say that just because wheat has opioids, that makes us addictive. Mother's milk has opioids in it. I think we, it's got opioids in it because we're supposed to eat it. It makes us want more of it. We keep cherry picking science to make these claims that don't make sense from the perspective of the whole. One of, and one of maybe the, the, the most uh, compelling uh, you know, um, rebuttals that I hear against wheat is that the ancient wheat was much better than the modern wheat. And I gotta tell you, some of the science that, that Dr. Davis used in his book, Wheat Belly, to, call, to say that ancient wheat was worse, was a study, and stay with me here, it's a little bit complicated. They took a study and they said that, that mod, they took about 36 different versions of modern wheat and 56 versions of ancient wheat. And they found that one out of the modern wheats was only a, a low responder in a, in, in, a, in a low immune responder. In other words, that the immune system in only one of the modern wheats rather was a low responder. And nine of the ancient wheats were low responders, which means they didn't have a big immune response, which was a good thing. Low responder means low immune response to gluten or wheat, and it's a good thing. But the ancient wheats and the modern wheats had the same number, equal number of high responders, that they were equally as bad. They caused an equally high immune response in the intestinal tract suggesting that neither ancient wheat nor modern wheat is actually going to be beneficial for people with celiac, which represents 0.7%, almost 1% of the population. If you tally in the undiagnosed gluten uh, celiac folks that, that, the, that the experts say exist, we're talking maybe 3% of the population shouldn't eat wheat, which is fine. But this study suggested that all wheat, not ancient or modern wheat, was actually going to be beneficial for people with gluten sensitivity. And therefore, their, their contention is that no one should eat wheat because it's the same poison for, for healthy folks versus celiac folks. But the studies show that the ancient wheat and the modern wheat had the same number of high immune responses, suggesting that neither of them are good. But again, back to the fact that maybe these lectins and the phytic acids and the harder to digest gelatins in wheat are irritating enough to actually trigger an immune response. And on all three of those counts, by the way, we know that there's glutenases and, 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 um, and uh, yeah, microbes in the large intestine that do phenomenal things for our immune system with the gluten and the phytic acid and the lectins that bypass the upper digestion to get into the lower digestion. My contention in my book, Eat Weed, is that yes, wheat's a hard to digest food. We eat it every day of the year, three, three, three times a day for 60 years in a processed, refined version of it. Wheat was harvested in the fall for winter eating. There's enzymes that digest wheat that actually that allow us to digest wheat that increase in our bodies in the winter and decrease in the summer. We are, this is a seasonal grain. We were supposed to eat a little bit of it, not every single day in, the, in an appropriate season and not a processed indigestible version of it. Those processed foods have literally ripped our intestinal tracts to shreds, broken down our upper digestive system. We can't break these foods down and they go undigested causing severe problems and we blame the wheat but the real problem is the broken down digestive system and taking wheat out of the diet or dairy out of the diet or hard to digest for the diet is a really good idea and I don't blame you I and mean, you should do that, but don't stop there. That problem has not been solved. There's mercury on every organic vegetable that it can't be washed off from the coal mine plumes. And if you can't digest wheat and dairy and you once were able to, how are you gonna break down the 400 billion pounds of toxic chemicals that are dumped into the American environment every single year. 62 million of them are cancer causing. You need a good digestive system and just taking wheat out of your diet, thinking all is well, is a false sense of security. Yes, take it out of your diet if you don't feel good with it. I don't blame you for a second, but 
Let's continue to dig in and fix the cause of the problem. And that's what I do in my book, Eat Lead. I take you step by step and I hold your hand and I guide you through the process of rebooting your digestive system, including getting the processed wheat and foods out of your diet, help, helping to navigate around the good and the bad wheats on the, in the marketplace, how to get the good wheat, and how to make sure that your digestive system and your lymphatic drainage systems, which is where your immune system lives, are optimized and not congested from years of stress and processed foods. So please read the article. It's quite a long one, I hate to say, but it does go through all the science step by step by step of how wheat is not this poison it's made out to be, and by just taking out of the diet and blaming wheat, we might actually be causing more problems than we think down the road. We've done it before with cholesterol. Are we doing it again? Let's think clearly before we just take a grain that we've been eating for 3.4 million years out of our diet as if it's some new fangled poison. And the genetics show that ancient wheat and modern wheat have the same impact on our immunity and our intestinal reactivity. So please read this article uh, based on my new book, Eat Wheat. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John DeYard, and you can find that article at lifespot.com. Thanks for listening. Hi, did you like this video? Do you like our content here at LifeSpa? You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash John DeYard right here and get this valuable content every week in your inbox. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.